Jump from the Life of Michael Jordan by Floyd Cooper. Essential question. How can you tell what an author thinks about a topic? His name is Michael. And from the time he was a little boy, he always seemed to be in and out of mischief. His parents did their best to keep all of the Jordan kids busy at their home in Wallace, North Carolina. James Ronald and Dolores, Larry and Rosalind, those kids couldn't have been happier playing sports and games. But Michael? He just had a different kind of energy, and curiosity, too. Along with sports, the Jordans gave all the children rules and chores to keep them plenty busy. But there just weren't enough rules or chores to match the boundless bustle of those Jordan kids. They bounced off the walls of their bungalow home, and young Michael was the bounciest. Stop and think. Author's craft. Find nearby words in the last paragraph that all start with the same sound. Why do you think the author uses this alliteration? Maybe, the Jordans figured, if they move to another house with more room and space. And that's what they did. When Michael was seven years old, the Jordans moved to suburban Wilmington, North Carolina. Michael's mom and dad even let the kids help build the house so they could learn how working together as a team was the way to get things done. And so they could get rid of some of that energy. At the new house, Michael ran and played with his new friends. Mostly, though, Michael tried to keep up with his older brother, Larry. Trouble was, no matter how Michael tried it, it seemed as if Larry was bigger, quicker, and luckier. Michael did not give up, no, no. The more Michael lost, the harder he tried. But the truth is, Larry was always one jump sooner in checkers, one stroke faster in swimming, one breath longer underwater. Larry dashed. Michael only ran. Larry sang. Michael croaked. Larry leaped. Michael only hopped. In fact, growing up, his family called Michael Rabbit. One of the first things that Michael's father had done at the new house was to put up a basketball hoop right in the backyard. Kids from all over would play on that hoop, but more and more, after the other kids had gone, the games ended up being a contest between Larry and Michael. They would play one-on-one -on -one so much that the grass underneath the hoop refused to grow from the pounding. Michael wasn't growing much either, so he started hanging by his arms from a swing set for hours each day, hoping to stretch himself taller. But it was no use. For all too many years, Michael was still only rabbit. Stop and think. Question. Why was it no use for Michael to hang from a swing set, hoping to stretch himself taller? Now, Michael knew there was only one way for him to play basketball better than Larry, and that was to play more. He looked to pick up games on the blacktop at school or in the park. Or after he'd lose to Larry, he'd play alone, pounding and sweating and working that poor little backyard court from daybreak to day's end. And he wouldn't stop until he heard the screen door spring and his father's voice saying, Come in now, son. Time for bed. Just when he discovered the game at Laney High School is hard to say, but the sun seemed hotter there. The moves seemed quicker on the full blacktop court there. The hoops seemed higher, and the game seemed better to 11-year-old Michael. The raw power of the springy older players as they shot the ball in the hot, salty breeze. Now that was something to see. What did he want? Why, he wanted to be asked to play. But for what seemed like a long time, he did little more than wish. Time helps, and it helped Michael. By the time he was in junior high, he was turning out to be a fair baseball player. In fact, when he was 12, he led his baseball team to the state championship. He grew smart.
Varner, too, persuading his friends to do some of his dreaded chores, like mowing the lawn, and leaving him to do only the ones he enjoyed, like ironing his own shirts. And he began to grow taller, taller than anyone in his family. Hanging on the swing set must have helped. Stop and think. Fact and opinion. Find at least one fact and one opinion on pages 374 through 375. Despite all the baseball, by the time he was in high school, Michael started to live and breathe basketball. He loved everything about it. The smell of the ball, the swoosh of the net. Soon, it was all he wanted to play. He even gave up baseball. He saw less and less of Larry these days, because Larry was becoming a true sports star. He was too busy to play with his little brother. More and more, Michael hung out at the blacktop by the high school. One day, the blacktop kids asked him to play. There was a crowd gathered by the fence, boys and girls, but this was Michael's chance. Suddenly, Michael had the ball. He dribbled it down the court, taking the ball hard to the hole, and just as he reached the rim, bam, a huge body slammed into Michael. From the hot tack tar, he looked up at the ball as it bounced off the rim. Michael had blown the layup. From the side, a voice broke the slow motion silence in a teasing, mocking whine. Hey, ears, open your eyes. Michael gritted himself back into the game, but the taunts began to spread from the onlookers. With each dribble, he was scoffed at for his little boy haircut and the way his ear stuck out. With every layup, he was jeered about the way his tongue hung out of his mouth when he shot the ball, and right in front of the girls. None of it stopped Michael. He came back and played the next day, and the next, and the next. And the truth is, he got better and better. Finally, one day, he and his buddy Leroy decided to try out for the Laney High School varsity basketball team. Surely he would make it. Larry had. But at the end of the week, when the list of players was put up, there was no Michael Jordan on it. Even Leroy had made the team. But Coach Herring had seen something he liked in the plucky kid. He put him on the junior varsity team and offered to coach Michael one-to-one -one if Michael would meet him before school every morning at 6 o'clock a.m. Michael not only came, he worked hard, dribbling, passing, shooting, dribbling, passing, shooting, 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 and Michael began to get not just okay, but good. He got so good, in fact, that the varsity players started coming to all the junior varsity games to watch Michael play. We don't know exactly when Michael turned the tables on Larry for the first time, but it may very well have happened the summer that Michael shot up four inches and went to basketball camp. One afternoon, the two started going at it again on the backyard hoop. At first, it seemed just like old times. Family and friends gathered around the hot, sticky court to watch the two brothers. But something was different. When Larry dashed across the court, Michael was there. Larry leaped for the hoop. Michael was there, too. Soon the brothers were in the thick of the game, a tangle of arms and legs flashing around the orange ball. Could Michael actually win? Larry wasn't worried. He was ahead of Michael by one point. Larry grinned. It was the usual end to the usual game. Then, Michael had the ball. They both knew what usual meant. Michael would leap to dunk, and Larry would jump higher, grab it, and dunk it for the win. Well, Michael leaped, just like always, and Larry leaped, just like always. But Michael kept going and going, past the wide span of Larry's hands. It seemed as if Michael just hung there for a moment, as if waiting. 
Was it possible he had outjumped the master? He had, and he dunked the ball in the hoop for the win. Michael smiled. He had beaten his brother, the best, at his own game. The laughing and hand slapping that followed that magical game followed Michael Jordan, rabbit, through his entire career, from basketball camps to college teams, and finally into the professional world of basketball, the NBA. And Larry was there too, always an athlete in his own right, but rooting for his best competitor. Brothers, friends, whatever Michael Jordan became had started at their backyard hoop with Larry with games that went on past dark that pushed Michael Jordan to become more than he was and more than any basketball player has ever been in 